Okay, welcome everybody. Um, let me open my agenda. Um, so what a world we are in. Who ever thought that everyone would be elected to council and then be our first virtual council? Um, so this is the Greenfield Day Council meeting. Today is April 15th, 2020. It's our 204th regular meeting. Um, and, and anything's regular about this meeting. Um, the time is 7.05 p.m. And we are holding our first ever remote meeting via WebEx. Um, this meeting is being recorded and videotaped by the city and by GCTV. If any other persons present are doing the same, please notify me at this time. And to do so, make sure you come off mute. So it is also being recorded on WebEx. Right, yep. Seeing none or hearing none, unless anyone's Sheila cannot hear. Yep, I see that. I guess let's do a quick pulse check. Can every can we maybe do um, open the meeting? Can we have all counselors just say that they're here? Do you want me to uh, do? Oh the roll call that way we can see if they can hear yeah just to make sure everyone i can hear everyone and everyone can hear us okay um oh, yeah so roll that that'll be helpful please thank you okay so i could uh okay the roll call is for attendance councillor jarvis present thank you councillor gwynn Councillor Gwynn. Maybe he's having trouble hearing as well. Yeah, um, he just messaged that he is here. Um, so he is attending the messenger. Councillor Disorder. Here. Thank you. Councillor Bottom. Here. Oh, Councillor Gwynn, are you here? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you, you yes. Yeah. Councillor Dolan. I'm here as well. Thank you. Councillor Gilmore. Councillor Gilmore, can you hear me? Hold on just a minute, folks. I'm going to see if I can help Councillor Gilmore with her microphone. Councillor Gilmore, can you hear me? I'm going to come back to Councillor Gilmore in a minute. Councillor Wheeler? Here. Thank you. Councillor Mayo. Here. Thank you. Councillor Hirschfeld. Here. Thank you. Councillor Elmer. Here. Thank you. Councillor Forgy. Here. Thank you. Councillor Ricketts. Here. Thank you. President Stemple. Present. Thank okay, you. So now that might be um, a, a internet issue. Okay. Councillor Gilmore, can you hear me? <clears throat> Councillor Gilmore? Can you hear me? Whoops. I can see you. Yeah. <laughs> we can see you. She can hear me, Kathy. Sheila, raise your hand if you are um, acknowledging that you're here. Thank you. I see she's raising her hand. Perfect. Madam President, you have a full council. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Um, 
So before we go ahead and move into the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I just want to, now that everyone's here, go over and confirm some of the processes in our virtual environment. Um, so Kathy sent out an email earlier today, and just in case no one has received it or had the opportunity to read it, because times are crazy. Um, so please use audio only when you're actively speaking, when you want to debate or comment. Um, for the majority of the time, please have yourself um, on mute so we don't have background noise. Um, that will be very helpful to making sure that we have um, an orderly agenda. Um, I know it says here to only use video and audio when you're actively speaking, but I think for right now, it's okay to use video. And if we do have um, a broad band, or broad, I'm sorry, bandwidth issue, then we might have to go to no video unless you are speaking. And so I'll just kind of call that if it happens, I'll keep monitoring it. We'll all know if it happens because we, the meeting will essentially crash. Um, <laughs> does everybody understand that? So mute and when you're not speaking, unmute when you do need to speak. And when you do need to speak, so we're not speaking all over each other, um, I realize that there is a mechanism on WebEx for raising your hand, but I think the Chromebooks do not, um, the functionality of the Chromebooks do not allow for the raising of the hand. So we're not gonna be able to use that to be acknowledged. So if you'd like to be acknowledged, please use the chat box to request to be acknowledged and um, to unmute yourself. I will acknowledge you, you'll unmute yourself and then you'll discuss. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? Sounds good. Great, thank you very much. Um, and then I just want to be very clear to everybody that we are not to use the chat box for debating or discussing motions. The only reason why any counselor should be using the chat box is if they're having technical issues or if they wish to be acknowledged. Um, if we do use the chat box for that purpose, we'll be violating open meeting law and we certainly don't want to do that. Um, and then lastly, when we vote, uh, because it is hard to see hands, we will be doing roll call votes tonight. And um, I guess lastly, if there's any public here, um, you will do the same to sign in to public comment. You will use the chat box to please list your name and your address. And I will acknowledge public comment speakers by the order that they have been typed into the, the chat box. And then um, after that, we ask the same for public to please not use the chat box to discuss, comment, or react to the meeting. Um, so that is the quick rundown. And of course, if anybody has questions as we go through, um, if you have questions about anything, um, please be acknowledged and you can ask live via the call. All right, um, with that being said, I will move into a voluntary Pledge of Allegiance. I have a flag here. If anyone would like to look at the flag, I will move out of the way. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I can't say I've ever done that in my house, so that's great. Um, lovely. New new times. Uh, so next we have an approval of minutes for February 19th, 2020. Um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Who is that? Councilor Ricketts. Thank you. Do I hear Bill more second? Uh, do I hear move from Councilor Ricketts? Second by Councillor Gwynn. Thank you very much. Is there any discussion regarding the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll do this. Aye. Are there any opposed? Abstentions? All right. We'll, we'll call that a unanimous positive, Kathy. And then we will do roll call for our motions moving forward. Next up, we have communications. It looks like from our chairperson of the school committee, 
take the floor, please. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Welcome. Hi, everybody. So I didn't know that I was going to have to give the city council lessons on having a video meeting. We've had three video school committee meetings since the shutdown. So we're the experts, I think. Um, uh, Superintendent Harper took a personal day today. And um, I'll start with a little bit about what's been happening in the schools and her much needed personal day, I should say. Um, her Superintendent Harper has been working easily 16 hour days since the shutdown, trying to manage going through the process of identifying how to engage our students before we were told to put together a remote learning plan. And then once uh, we were given the charge by the state on uh, March 26 to put together a remote learning plan for all of our students, she worked uh, tirelessly 10 days straight to put that plan together. Um, and I want to acknowledge also that uh, the school committee members, Glenn Johnson and Susan Ekstrom spent uh, seven multiple hour sessions with the Greenfield Education Association, the union, the teachers union, uh, putting together a uh, impact bargaining agreement, a mutual agreement around remote learning for our teachers and our, um, our unit C staff, our paraprofessional staff. And that process went as smooth as can be uh, possible. And the, the issue with the, the union and the remote learning plan is twofold. We can't put something in the remote learning plan without the Education Association, the union, agreeing that it would be a part of the teachers and the educators' responsibilities. So they were constantly moving back and forth with what could be in the plan and how, um, how the teachers would uh, agree to it. And it was a very delicate process, but both sides worked really, really well together. Um, as I said, it took seven sessions over about 10 days to get that done. Um, and you know, I, I would also say we have we haven't heard a whole lot uh, officially from families uh, from students about moving to remote learning. We've had you know definitely some concerned emails from parents, definitely some emails from parents questioning what was happening and um, why it was taking so long to move to remote learning. And I don't know how you measure how long, this is what I've told people is, how do you measure how long it should take to do something totally unprecedented in a monumental timeline? Like it, it, we just, you can't put something together that shifts your entire educational structure in 10 days, but that's basically what we were asked to do and, and what we've done. Um, and I think that when we come out of this, not only will we have an amazing uh, resource in a remote learning plan, but also we will have learned a whole lot about what works for students in a 21st century environment, what works for teachers in a 21st century environment, and I think this will really expand the tools that we have uh, available as educators. The last piece I just want to mention is that a big part of rolling this plan out was actually getting students the technology that they needed to be successful. And that included a plan to roll out um, almost 500 Chromebooks and assign them to individual students who needed them. Uh, that happened last Thursday and Friday. I think the exact number is like 485 Chromebooks that already belong to the schools that have been rolled out to students. Um, and that was a huge effort that took staff from every single school to make that happen, including distributing them on last Thursday in the pouring rain to families who pulled up in their cars with paper signs uh, with the student's name in the window, you know, to do social distancing properly. Um, and so it was a huge effort. And along with that technology effort, uh, we worked very closely with GSET to 
uh, offer. There are students and families in the district that don't have internet at home. We worked with GSET uh, to offer a special package to families that qualify uh, that they can get internet from, for no cost within the GSET area for the rest of the school year. And then I believe $10 a month after that. Um, the city collaboration has just been awesome. Um, I know I've talked to the mayor pretty regularly. I know that the superintendent has been um, involved in a lot of conversations at the city level. Um, and we're very grateful for the collaboration that's come out of this. I think Greenfield has seen what uh, planning and um, collaboration can do to make things easier in a really impossible situation. Um, and I'm, I'll leave it at that and I'm happy to take any questions. No questions? Although it looks like the President Semple is frozen. I have a comment. Sure. Um, congratulations. I've listened to both of your last two meetings. And oh, thank I, you. I have found the effort that you made to get that done um, extraordinarily commendable. And I, I did just have a little um, question about the GSET role in it. Your role has been just like above board and wonderful. I just wondered, I read a little bit of something about what GSET did, but could you go over that one more time? And again, thank you. Sure, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate, especially that people are listening um, to the meetings uh, on, on, uh, on GCTV. Um, so with GSET, they are offering a package that uh, provides internet access to eligible families through the end of the school year at no cost. And the eligible means they have to be in the service area that GSET already has, um, and they have to have a qualifying uh, reason like being on uh, SNAP benefits or some other uh, benefit program uh, that indicates that they're low income and then they can get into that program uh, free of charge for the rest of the school year. You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, it looks like Sh Councilor Gilmore has a question. Yes, I was wondering, um, at this point, do we have any plans for the kids to return to school during the 1920 school year, or are we looking at maybe fall for the 2021 school year? Or do we even yeah. know yet? That, that's a great question. The easy answer is we don't know yet. Uh, the more detailed answer is we are really proceeding at every step with caution. I should have said before, I'm, I'm really proud of the fact that Greenfield did not, many other school districts ran right out of the gate and put remote learning in place the week that schools closed and have had to do a whole one step forward, two steps back, rollout based on guidance from the state changing or not having guidance at all when the schools first closed. We waited to implement remote learning until Thursday, March 26 is when we began to put the plan in place because that is when the guidance from the state came to do remote learning through May 4th. May 4th is currently the date at which we're scheduled to reopen the schools. Um, I anticipate that that will be evaluated very closely within the next few weeks. And I do know from being on uh, one of Joe Comerford's conference calls last week that at the state level, they're already talking about whether or not that May 4th date is a reasonable date. We don't have any further guidance than that at this time. Is, can people hear me? Yes. Okay, I had a, a internet or something issue. Um, I so I missed the you looked good where you froze up, so it's okay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, <laughs> it's all for television. Um, so I, I wasn't sure what I missed or not. And so where I left off as you were speaking about the partnership between GSET and the schools, and I, I really do want to applaud this effort 
but I think it also shines a light on the disparity that we still have, um, which is no, I, I honestly don't think it's a, it's a fault of GSET. I don't think it's a fault of the schools, obviously, that GSET still doesn't have access to some of our lower income areas in town, meaning the Greenfield Gardens or Leiden Woods, where students really do need access to the internet and may not have it and don't have access to this wonderful, wonderful, amazing collaborative program. And so I'm urging counselors to really think about that, how the the citizens in Greenfield who need uh, low cost internet the most via GSET don't have access to it because we've kind of been nickel and diming GSET over the years. Um, we really need to think about how we're gonna move GSET forward um, and fund it so all of our residents can, can have access to this tool, especially now when our students need it the most. Um, and so I just wanted to applaud that, Amy. And I also want to say like thank you to you and everybody else for the work that you've done. And it's easier to like sit back and be like, why isn't this happening so quickly? Um, but the work that's been put in is amazing. You've done such a great job. Thank you. I, and you know, I, I'm I'm very, very proud of the way everyone has worked together, particularly the, the school committee. Um, we've really come together and contributed in a way. Each individual member has given um, really excellent uh, opinions and problem solving, and it's helped us to move forward. It's uh, it, it's a it it really is an impossible situation that we're in in terms of schooling. There's no easy answer. There's no ideal remote learning plan. Um, so we're just trying to do our best with what we know about our community and the resources that we have. Great, and I'd like to acknowledge Councillor Ricketts to speak. Okay, um, let me see if I can do this. Can you, everyone hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I just wanna let you know that I've been following the school committee meetings and they have been great, I love how just how excited everybody is to work together, to be on the same page. And when I just watched the other night, they were just like, can we meet again tomorrow? Can we meet in two days? And they really want to get up and running and work together fast. So it's been great watching your meetings. You're doing a great job. And I just wanted to say I'm proud of the school committee the, all the time and effort they're putting into this. And it doesn't matter how many times in one week they are up and willing to run so that's good thank you thank you penny would anyone else um like to speak or have a question for uh chairperson Pariti? seeing none thank you so much um, oh, thank you very much. Good luck to you guys. To <laughs> I, I actually I'm have, welcome, welcome to I know if you can hear Joe in the background, but Joe is saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joe. Thank you guys. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, and next we have communications from Mayor Weedgarner and any other city officers and employees. Well, okay. I'm trying to unmute. I can hear you. Yep. Okay. I think I'm un Oop, and now I'm no. Am I unmuted? You are now. Okay, great. <laughs> Here I go then. Uh, good evening, counselors. Uh, thank you, Chair Proetti, for that uh, great report. I do, uh, first and foremost, before we get started on this, uh, with what the city has to say here, um, commend the school committee for really and truly all the hard work they've done. Mm -hmm. uh, I could see it daily. And, um, and yes, we've had many communications and they've been, um, They've been going quite well, so I'm I'm delighted that uh, the remote learning program is up and running, and I applaud any kind of planning before one acts, um, because I think at the end of the day you'll you'll always be better for it. 
which brings me to uh, the state of the city of Greenfield at this moment in time. I thought tonight we would talk about two things. Um, I'll try to keep them both brief. Um, first is a COVID-19 pandemic response. Um, and I have Chief Graham and Chief Craig here with me this evening or somewhere in this um, interweb is, um, is the two of them. And um, I can turn it over to them shortly. But just to say, we began our planning uh, for our response, if I'm not mistaken, on March 6th with a meeting of many department heads and uh, was led primarily by Chief Strand. And we all took his lead uh, for, for the most part. And it's paid out in many dividends. I, I could not have possibly done this without uh, both of our chief's leadership. So uh, let me just say that up front, as well as the constant attention to the importance of communication from uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Danielle Letourneau. So um, I will thank both of, all three of them here this evening. And of course, the whole uh, emergency command staff. We have a great staff over there from our healthcare people to our emergency management people, to people handling uh, the, the remote line, or I'm sorry, the um, resource line, and, um, and Christy Moore, who's been fielding a lot of different jobs uh, here and there. Right now, she's uh, assisting with the um, resource line. And, um, MJ Adams uh, as well. And MJ's done a, a wonderful job uh, both helping ServiceNet get their um, homeless shelter consolidated so that they have room now uh, on Well Street for, um, for the healthy homeless. And they have the ability to also uh, isolate people if they need to. So far, that's not been necessary, and we are um, we're grateful for that for sure. So thanks to them. Uh, MJ is now uh, working on and has collaborated with um, the CDC on a micro business loan program for those people that really are even less than two months away from not being able to have their business um, up and you know continue running. So there's all of the kinks have not been worked out on that, but it's very close. And they'll we'll have a, um, a, a loan program up for that. So I'm really happy uh, that they were able to work so quickly on that really just uh, end of last week through um, through today. Uh, and as far as where we're at, I don't know how many of you read the numbers this morning. I don't know that there's a lot to read into them, but um, <clears throat> and perhaps both of the chiefs can give you a even uh, as of this afternoon update. So uh, we currently have uh, 66 positive cases. We have 45 resolved and we have 22 deaths. And what's, what's important about these numbers for Greenfield is that the 22 deaths, as bad as that is, uh, is holding, holding steady. And uh, the 45 improving is up from the day before. So uh, we're feeling, um, cautiously hopeful that uh, we're somewhere, somewhere <laughs> on the road to improvement, I guess is the way I would put it, because that's really just a snapshot in time. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to um, uh, Bob Strayan and uh, Robbie Haig uh, to make any additional comments on COVID-19. And when they're done, I will ask um, Liz, because as you all well know, the next big thing that we're doing simultaneously 
directly with this is the budget. And I don't know how many of you were able to be at the Ways and Means meeting for the executive office um, the other evening, but Liz put together a budget overview that I think is important for all counselors to see as you move into to this period of time. And she's shortened it up so it won't be too long. So, uh, Chiefs, are you ready? Sure, Mayor. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, and to everyone, uh, hello. Uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for the support to the EOC uh, as we have uh, gone through this effort. Uh, I, I'll just say that the, the work that the staff is doing out of the EOC is pretty remarkable. Um, our, we are so fortunate to have the expertise in our health uh, section within the command uh, center. Um, with the work that they've been doing, uh, it's pretty remarkable the amount of work that they've done from day one. Um, we would be aware of a hot spot that would come up and our health folks would be right on it and confining it. And uh, I really credit them for uh, keeping the numbers uh, in check uh, where they are. Obviously, we, we all are concerned uh, with the numbers that we have, but our numbers are pretty uh, reflective of, of the rest of the country and where we are with the COVID vi virus. Uh, but they've done a remarkable job keeping it uh, in check uh, in, in the places uh, when we've been able to find out early. Um, our health people are in contact with all our, our, our uh, facilities, our nursing homes and the hospital twice a day. Uh, they're constantly in contact with them. Uh, we are in contact with the hospital on their planning efforts. Um, should, uh, should, you know, surge issues become an, uh, a problem, um, we're, we're working on, you know, the, the what if plans. Uh, and there's a lot of planning that goes on with that. And everybody's been doing a great job with that. The one thing that I do want to highlight is, is the team effort from this, uh, from the city. Uh, has been huge and we are running with a skeleton crew at the operation center uh, and that is really done by design just to try to keep the risk down uh, for uh, for people working there. Uh, we know that we're at risk working together but we put the risk aside and uh, uh, really uh, do a great job with the with the small crew that we have. Um, so that's what I have and unless Chief Haig has something. Yeah, I don't have a lot to add. It's it's been um, an experience, and uh, we're a long way from the end. But I, I do uh, want to thank everybody that is there and the support that we're getting from the top for when we need something, and we're able to go to uh, go to the mayor's office and uh, getting that support for what uh, we need to provide uh, at least in the short term, um, in hopes that we have a, a very long term success. So I, I echo what Bob said, and. Uh, Again, I also uh, would urge any counselors who wish to come down and, and see what we have going on there. We're a much smaller group now than we were when we started, but uh, that's a good sign. It's, it's uh, working, but I hope to uh, see everybody down there at some point. Okay. Yeah, if I if I could add one more one more item, we really would like to uh, extend our appreciation to the citizens of the city of Greenfield. Uh, they've taken. Uh, uh, the mandates that have come down from the federal government and from the state government, and uh, people seem to be adhering to it. And I think that that's uh, part of our success with uh, with really trying to flatten the curve, if you will. Everything that uh, we've been in contact with the hospital has suggested that that is exactly uh, what has happened. Um, so uh, we want to just put the message out. So thank you for our citizens within the city and. Uh, uh, we know it's hard, but keep up the work that they're doing as well. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Councillor Ricketts or a comment. Hi, thank you. I don't so much have a question as I do a comment. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the mayor for inviting councillors to come. And I don't know if all the councillors have been there or not, but I was beyond impressed. I didn't know what to expect when I went there. I expected both chiefs to be there and I could ask a couple questions, but it was so much bigger than that. I mean, it's 
a real well-run operation. I think it's impressive. I can see why, you know, you don't have Channel 22 and all the media in there taking pictures because you do a very good job of making sure the virus isn't coming in and out of there. But for the council, I hope that every single one of you go because I think it's important. I learned so much today and they are right on top of it. Um, I know that other towns must be looking to us for guidance and how they could too do this, but so impressed. And I just want all public safety, just keep being safe and thank you for everything. Um, next, there's a either a question or a comment from Councillor Gilmore. Um, actually, I have both, if you don't mind. Um, so I also appreciate the invitation to tour the uh, the EOC. I unfortunately uh, decided it was not very uh, it was not wise for me to go because I have several people in my house who are still considered essential employees. They have to report to work every day. Um, so my house is not exactly a fortress, although we're trying our best to quarantine. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to go and, and, you know, risk any of our first responders catching anything if I'm an asymptomatic carrier. Um, but that being said, um, I do want to know for those of you who are working on the front lines, I keep hearing that there's supposed to be a surge soon. And I thought it was supposed to be this week, but I also heard it was going to be last week. And I feel like my my information is so limited because I am stuck in the house and I only get the news articles and unfortunately, you know, the things that people share on Facebook. And I'm just wondering if you have a better sense of how things are going. Are we um, are, are we really approaching that surge? Is, is it behind us now? Um, I just kind of want to get a sense of where we are as a community. If you can even give me that information. Um, I, I can try to address a little bit for you and then I'm sure Bob can do better than me. Um, I, I think overall we're looking at it saying we expect it to be uh, worse than we are. Um, I, I think when you start looking at the numbers and we, we talk about this every day, um, and, and we keep hearing the surge is coming, the surge is coming, and we can't say it's not. But what we can tell you is, is that just by the way we look at our numbers, when you see a gradual increase, that can be expected. Um, what we don't want to see is a monster increase. And, and I think what we're seeing right now is if people are doing what, what they can do to the best of their ability, that curve is more of a gradual increase, which allows for the hospitals and the doctors to, to handle those cases that are coming in on a basis that they can handle. Uh, not saying that they're not seeing a lot, but what we don't want to do is overwhelm them. So I think when we talk about it every day, that's what we tend to look at. And that's why we're really proud of our, our health uh, care side who has been very diligent on getting out there and reaching out to people, especially those who have either come into contact or been around or on that high risk in, in getting them the information quickly to maybe avoid uh, a potential additional spread. So I think we're, in our minds at least, we're, we're less than a pace than we expected, but we, we definitely know we're not out of the woods yet at all. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Chief. I know he probably has more detail for you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Chief. Um, so the indication, like I said, was talking with the hospital is, is their data that they're showing for the Bay State Health Systems uh, uh, across the board is showing off the level off, uh, if you will, of new new patients. We see an anomaly uh, um, every once in a while, like two days ago, we, there were 10 new cases within the community, but a lot of that's reporting. Um, and we have far more testing that is available now. You know, two weeks ago, there was very little testing, only the very, very sick people were, were being tested. Uh, and now that, that testing is, is more far reaching. And so we, we expect the numbers to go up, but I think that that is going to be um, not indicative of where the disease is right now within the community. Um, and uh, what's important to us that we're seeing is the hospital rates uh, are staying consistent and uh, 
uh, and and staying down. Um, and for three days, um, uh, you know, the deaths in the, in, in the community have been steady for three days. And that's something that we hadn't seen uh, uh, for a while. Now, that's not to say that that won't continue and the rates won't go no. up, but we are seeing indication that it is level enough. Um, and uh, as long as people keep being diligent with what they're doing, uh, we're hoping that, that that trend will will continue. And again, you know, I said it earlier and the chief said it, this this is really a credit to, to our health folks that um, uh, it's unbelievable the amount of work that, that, that they do. The whole operation center to support the city is mainly there to support them and the efforts that they they have uh, and and they work. Uh, it's, it, I think it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, they're really doing a remarkable job. And we're also seeing the numbers go up for people that are recovering, and that and that's that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Chief Haig, uh, Chief Haig said that well. Uh, our recovery rate. We're actually tracking. Uh, you know how many cases have been from year to date, but we also track the amount of people that have fully recovered, uh, and that number it keeps going up and up and up, and that is uh, that is really encouraging to see. Um, Great, thank you, um, Mayor. Do you have yeah. anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> um i think they covered it pretty well i will um again just uh, say thank you to everyone uh in the city of Go echo what bob said everyone in the city of greenfield who for the most part is following the guidelines that were set down um by our office and by the governor's office with regard to um physical distancing and and staying at home um as far as media coverage goes somebody mentioned that i will say that channel five from boston came out yesterday and had a fairly lengthy interview with me um and they were all over the city it wasn't just me they went to um uh, they went to the salvation army during feeding uh, during the uh, lunch time and i feel like they were at a couple of other different places as well so it was if if they ever end up showing it it'll and they you know cover it well it will be a nice piece on greenfield um in the boston area i'm told that it'll be on tomorrow's news in the evening either five or six but um i don't i don't know that for for sure yet so at some point, go online, it'll probably be up there as well. Um, I, if you it will indulge us a little bit longer, I'll ask Liz to switch gears here and, um, and share a brief uh, budget overview with, uh, with counselors. Before Counselor Gil Gilman begins, I'm going to acknowledge Counselor Disorder to speak. Oh, sure. I didn't see that, I'm sorry. No worries. This is all virtual weirdness. <laughs> yeah. I see Phil has one too. Jenny, are you there? Can you hear me? We can. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just also wanted to say thank you. I took the tour also. Um, and I'd like to say a special thank you to all that you have done to be protecting us. And um, I had just a question about the reporting as far as our long-term care facilities. If you, either of the chiefs had any input on that, that seems to be nationally a um, something that is not <clears throat> taken into, it's not counted. Uh, in proportion to how it should be. Do you have any input on that? But mostly thank you. Um, as, as far as numbers, what Greenfield is reporting is what we've been consistent with is, is our verified numbers uh, citywide. Um, that, that's, that's how we're reporting it. Um, we don't report per location ad address as such, but we do report as the whole 
verified numbers. And uh, like Chief Strahan said, you know, there there is, sorry, Pat, uh, there is a uh, a lag uh, at times with with the reporting of the verified numbers. So uh, unfortunately, sometimes you'll you'll see those numbers and and kind of question them. But but unfortunately, we want to make sure we're reporting accurate numbers. Uh, we're not hiding anything. Uh, as far as numbers, we're reporting the true verified numbers that we get. Uh, yes, um, we have urged uh, those who wish to report their numbers from their, their own uh, locations. They certainly can, but we as a city uh, have stuck by this. We, we are reporting verified numbers as a whole. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I'd also like to acknowledge Councillor Elmer. Hi, thank you, President. Um, Simple. Uh, I, I had two questions for the chiefs. Uh, how's your supply of PPE? Do you have enough? And uh, has have the residents of the nursing homes have you ha, have you been able to test everybody there, the residents and the staff? Do you have enough testing for that? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I can answer that question. Uh, so we, as the public safety officials uh, within the community, have received our shipments of uh, of PPE, and so we're okay for a few weeks. Uh, we've received a, a big shipment from MEMA on hand sanitizer, and so we're in the process of getting that out to, to other agencies. We've taken some delivery of PPE that we've been able to turn around and, and, and send out small quantities. But really, uh, when when uh, vital, especially early on, when vital uh, facilities were short, uh, we were able to give them some PPE to get them through to when their shipments were there. PPE is flowing a little bit more, uh, but we still have some we still have some some significant needs. Uh, but uh, our our folks are are well protected, and uh, and um, if it changes, we will update you. I think the second part of your question was about the testing and, and we're not doing that. We don't do the testing. That's not part of what we do. Um, can, I, can I follow up? Sure. Uh, but do you, do you know what the situation is in the nursing homes? Do they have enough testing equipment? Hmm. Uh, Chief, do you want to address that? Uh, I mean, we don't really, unfortunately, we don't get involved with the actual testing of it. Um, I can only kind of tell you what our process is for our people. Um, you know, there's a, certainly a process for first responders, um, whether it's the Big E or going to uh, Gillette Stadium or whether it's going to private doctors. That's our testing procedure. We aren't involved with how many tests or who's tested with, with private agencies. Thank you. Um, Councilor Elmer, if you want to add on to that, Chief, or not? No, uh, I, I think you covered it, Chief. Um, you know, the one thing that 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 we have learned with testing uh, first responders is is the the accuracy of the test uh, until you're actually uh, ex exhibiting symptoms has has not been the greatest, um, and so uh, uh, we're adjusting our our. our our first responder testing, as far as everybody else in the community, um, the, the, the procedure has been from day one the same, and that is, is if you have symptoms, you call your healthcare provider, and your healthcare provider can give you the direction on where, where folks can get tested. That's the method that is, is still holding true to uh, that. I can answer uh, uh, a part of your question regarding um, nursing homes. Um, I really, the only one that I, I think any of us have any uh, insight into is Buckley and their parent company has contracted with a lab. Uh, so whenever those folks in Buckley need to be tested, um, they are tested and the lab and the results can be turned around in a day, which is certainly different from a lot of other labs and testing facilities. But, uh, they're the only ones that have really reported out to us any any kind of specifics around testing and what their capacity is. 
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, take, I guess, pause to see if counselors have any questions mm -hmm. regarding this piece. Um, and then um, we'll kick it off to Director uh, Gilman. Seeing none, uh, welcome to our virtual meeting, Director Gilman. <laughs> Hi, all. Um, on the first uh, Ways and Means budget meeting, I did do a presentation. Um, you all should have received it by email, the presentation and all the attachments. Um, it was recorded. It is on GCTV if you would like to view it. Um, but one of the things, I'm just going to go through a few key slides, not all of it, because it, it was a lot. But one of the things I wanted Council to get out of this presentation is that how this is one whole budget and that the magnitude of the fixed cost in relationship to the entire budget. So I did a couple graphs on that. I'll show you that. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what I heard this morning on a conference call with the mayors, mayors um, and the state on revenue for the state for the current year and 21. So, all right. Why am I not able to share content? Am I connected? Can people hear me? You are connected. It, so I'm seeing a little thing in the corner saying that we're having a bandwidth issue, but I see <laughs> something loading right now, Liz. Yes, so it I got might it, be I got it, I got it, I got it, I see it. Well, it's just taken a while, huh? Yeah, the bandwidth um, situation is real. Do you want us to shut off our vis our um, video? Would that help? Yeah, that would help a lot if counselors would um, shut off their video. Okay. There we go. There we go. Voila. Okay. So I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to skip some screens because I'm just going to go through um, some of the more important ones, I feel. Um, I actually am going to skip through this. Okay. The budget that the mayor presented is fit over 53 million, 53,879. The tax rate would be 23.55, which is a 2.69% increase or 62 cents. And our excess levy capacity at this point would be 1.5 million. So one of the, some of the major, um, I'm gonna skip over this again, there's a lot of attachments. Um, the major increases on expenses for the budget was the health insurance. We had a 7.5% increase and 13 new retirees. Um, 276,000 of it was from F free cash used to support the FY20 budget, which we don't want to do. Um, the increase in the school committee appropriation, increase in retirement assessment, and increase in contractual salaries. Um, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to go to some graphs. Um, okay. So this is where I'm talking about the fixed cat, fixed costs of this budget. And I took the $53,879 million budget and I did a pie graph and you can see that the fixed costs, which I have more detail on the next graph, is 30% of this budget. And this is a significant amount. And it's really what we need to try and focus on to achieve some savings efficiencies. Um, here is another way to break it out. So the center section are the fifth fixed costs. It's the pension, the health insurance, both active and retirees, unemployment, Medicare, life insurance, workers comp, um, our property and liability insurance, the debt. And so it, it, it does represent a lot, 30% of the budget and it interrelates to all the departments. 
Um, I think that there's a lot of information here and I really am going to skip through it because I know you've received the attachments and whether you want to ask questions now or even contact me after, we can. But we talked a bit about um, how we're going to handle what we don't know is coming. So for, for short term, we talked about identifying potential cuts in the budget. Um, we're, tr we're working on identifying what we feel is the potential revenue loss. Um, for FY20, I, unless we have some 9C cuts, um, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's where the state will say, we can't give you your all of your cherry sheet money this year. And at the end of the year, that's kind of a hard thing to swallow. <laughs> But I did not hear that at the mayor's meeting this morning. So it's not likely to happen. Um, and on our local receipts, we're actually doing pretty well. Um, the only concerns I have is on the Medicaid billing and I'm gonna reach out to the school because, oh, two thirds of the Medicaid billing comes in June. And so how, how reduced will that be or not, uh, but believe it or not, they have done some teledoc on those services. So there still could be a substantial um, piece coming in, but I don't think it'll be the whole thing. Um, the other area I'm concerned about is our parking meter revenue. Um, we're at this point, we're about 70,000 short, and this is mid April. Obviously we'll get some in, but not a lot. So I may have to submit something for an adjustment on that. But in the scheme of things with what we're dealing with, it's not a horrific position to be in. What is gonna be more um, difficult is on the 21 budget, because there is without a doubt going to be a cut to the governor's budget. Um, and I've heard anywhere from the Mass Taxpayers Foundation saying 14% um, to 10, but the state would not give any parameters on this meeting. So it's kind of difficult, but I have always found the Mass Taxpayers Foundation to be very reliable. Um, the other thing I can tell you is the cuts will likely be to the UGA accounts, the unrestricted general government accounts, they likely will not touch chapter 70. Um, there's also talk, I don't know if any of you remember the era and stimulus, stimulus grants back when the economy was really bad in 2008. Um, there's talk that something like that may come along and that was used to help support chapter 70 during that time frame. So I don't think there'll be a chapter 70 cut, but a 10% cut to our unrestricted general government is $346,000. So um, the other question I have is why we're doing okay on certain local receipts in FY20. That's because three quarters of the year, we did well. Um, the question is how long will this situation last and who knows? Um, will hotels and meals rebound and or is it going to take a while? The only blessing I can tell you <laughs> is that if you have to use one time for revenue sources, and that's sort of why we have a stabilization count or um, free cash, is that you're using it because you anticipate that the levels of that revenue will come right back up. Um, and so I, I, I think that that's also something we need to look at. Um, but I do know that we're going to start looking at some of those fixed costs and in terms in specifically health insurance. Um, we're going to start getting together and getting a strategy going um, and then present our um, thoughts to the Insurance Advisory Commission, but really going forward, 
we need to work on our fixed costs. It would always be lovely to get a new revenue stream, but that just, it, it, it just isn't realistic. Um, so we are facing some challenging times, but we are in a pretty good position with our stabilization account. And again, I will say this is why we have it. Um, and I, I feel that um, we're in better shape than a lot of community of the smaller communities. Um, so I, I think that the key to all this is for us to have a plan for which where we would make cuts if we had to. And you know, you have a meeting in July to reduce the budget, reduce, raise, and appropriate, which you can do before the tax rate gets set. Um, but we need to know how the year's gonna finish out and what the governor's numbers are gonna be. You know, you can't just start slashing without even knowing the extent to which you need to slash. Um, so, I, I, but we're up to the challenge. I, I think that we can work well together and, and figure out a good plan, a good strategy going forward. Um, and I don't know if, anyone has had a chance to read through the material. If you haven't, please do. You can also watch it again on GCTV. But um, it, this, this is not, this is an unusual budget as everything is unusual right now. Um, so I, I will take any questions um, from folks who have had a chance to look over the information Um, I'm going to acknowledge Councillor Gilmore. She's been maybe burning with a with a question for a little while. So go ahead, Councillor. Oh, Gilmore. sorry about that. No, oh, no you're fine. Sorry. I was not. Um, I I wasn't burning with a question. I just knew before the meeting started that I wanted to ask about this. Okay. So before the meeting, she's been burning with a question. <laughs> So I know that the budget process started long before any of us ever heard of coronavirus. And I know that the budget is for next year. We're talking about FY21. Um, uh -huh. I think that what, what a lot of people seem to be concerned about right now, um, the people that I've heard from anyways, have, is you know there are a lot of people who are out of work right now who don't know when they're going back to work. They don't know if they're going back to work. A lot of our small businesses are struggling. Some of them aren't sure if they're going to be able to reopen after this is over. And I'm thinking in the long term, I'm really concerned about what we can do to sort of help those folks out in the meantime. I know that, you know, we can levy taxes and we can say that this is how much it costs for us to run things. But you at the end of the day, you can't get blood out of stone. And I'm 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 not, you know, I I'm I'm not like a fiscal conservative. I don't think anybody thinks of me that way. But I do recognize the reality that we're, you know, a working class town. We we rely on, you know, a very small tax base. And I'm very, very concerned about how people are going to be able to make ends meet and, you know, come up with the funds that we need for for all of these expenses. And now we're talking about, you know, getting less from Governor Baker, which I, I completely understand why he would have to give us less. I know that there are more pressing issues right now. And I just wonder, do we have, is, is this something that we're going to be feeling the effects of for, for several years? Is there a way to sort of spread these costs out to make it easier on our residents? I know that we have to meet all these obligations. I, I know that we need our public safety um, our DPW workers, our schools, and all these things cost a lot of money. I recognize their value, but uh, is there is there any wiggle room for for folks who are who are challenged right now? Well, I can tell you that the treasurer collector does work with folks um, one on one in individual situations, but we are so reliant on our, our property tax revenue. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that there actually isn't some of the, um, 
what I'm calling era or stimulus that is going to come out, um, something along the lines for revenue. What we have coming out right now is like, we'll help you with COVID expenses and not a lot of recognizing the fact that we're losing revenue. Um, and, and, and that did come up at the meeting this morning. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully something like that will come through. Um, I, you know, it, it's hard because it's hard. I wish you had a crystal ball, you know? Um, how long will it take to come out of this? How quickly can some of these businesses recover? How quickly can some folks get back to work? We, we, we just don't know the magnitude or the answers. That's the uncertainty of this whole thing. That's what gets to me all the way around is the uncertainty of everything. Um, thank you. Thank you. I am, uh, Councilor Mayo, can you please refrain from commenting via the chat box? Um, if you do wanna speak, um, I'm happy to acknowledge you. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Director Gilman. Are you, were you finished? And may I please- I was finished, I just wanted to know if anyone had more questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna acknowledge Councilor Disorder now, because she has a question for you. Hi. Thank you very much. Um, I am, I, I'm on Ways and Means this year for the first time. And although uh, right now it, you're saying that the local receipts looked okay, I am concerned about the future of that hotel, restaurant, people's ability to pay their taxes. And um, I was thinking that probably might be down 10%. Someone else thought maybe it might be down 20% for either the end of this fiscal quarter or um, the first quarter of next year. And um, my question to you really was, although I'm in favor, definitely in favor of all of those things, have you been thinking as we're I've spent hours looking at this budget and numbers and numbers and numbers. Are you thinking that we should be proceeding as, oh, no, I have a twofold question. One, are you thinking that we should be proceeding as normally we had anticipated with what we planned to bond for with the bigger expenditures as far as what we were going to build? Um, um, do you think that that's actually going to happen in fiscal 2021? And my, the second part of my question is right now within our town, have we, and I hate to ask this, but have we done any layoffs to any departments, um, um, due to COVID-19 because that would impact, you know, what we're not spending this year is part of next year's budget, is part of fiscal 2021's budget, over and out. Okay, I'll just do quickly on the layoffs. Yes, there is layoff and reduction in hours for some positions. Um, and yet there are some other critical positions that are vacant, so you know you could you could look at that but um the as far as the local receipts for this year i actually went through and reviewed them all um hotel and meals um generally so you get paid quarterly so we've already received three quarters and generally it's heavier in the first half of the year than the second half of the year um i don't anticipate meals being horrifically off i i mean in terms of what was budgeted and where we're at um and i always say on the local receipts you have to look at bottom line for example um motor vehicle is for sure going to hit budget might go a little over um cannabis i was only allowed to because it was new budget 7500 and we're already at 52,000. so there's things that offset some are low some are under some are over the, the two I mentioned were my two biggest concerns 
which was the parking meter and, and the Medicaid, um, which I'm trying to clarify. Um, and yes, in 21, who knows how long it'll take for those to recover? And, and will some businesses just not come back? Um, and that could be the case. So the strategy um, really is, is twofold. You either make all the cuts now and say, we'll add this back if the local receipts are coming back, or you go with what you have and say in July, when we know that some of the numbers will make reductions then. That's kind of your choices. Um, and as far as the debt goes, um, I believe a lot of the projects, they're just gonna take longer. I don't know how, and we're like in terms of the library, they're just gonna have to give extensions. There, there's just no way um, the things can, can go forward. Um, so, Again, and debt is part of that center area that I talked about, you know, of fixed costs and, and controlling. But I actually do think we do a good job on that because we only authorize so much in capital projects each year based upon the schedules. Um, so, you know, it, it's just such a difficult year. Um, a lot of our departments aren't staffed enough. And, you know, if, if the magnitude of what we're dealing with comes out in July or August that it's astronomical, yeah, we're gonna have to have a better plan in place and we will have a plan in place. Um, but we don't know that. It's, it's the worst not knowing. Um, so you could hold off on, maybe a few of the, the capital items, but some of them are urgent. Um, you know, you have the library and, and the fire station. Those are the major ones. Right, and those were the two that I, both in favor, you know, personally speaking, that I, I know that I'm so excited that we're going to be doing. And, my question was actually to you was, did you think that was really going to be happening in fiscal 2021? And yet, and, but I know that the interest rates are going to be extremely low, which is a great time to be borrowing money. And can, can we make a plan? Can we make a plan where we say, okay, we'd like to take that $10 million, but because we're planning on doing that and, as part of the budget, can we say we'd like to take that $10 million, but then uh, or can you have like a, a secondary plan where you say, well, we're not actually going to be able to do that. Can you make a two-part plan in your budget? Yes, over, over now. Well, I, I want to make sure I'm understanding your question. Um, the $10 million for the fire station can only be used for the fire station you're not asking that no what i'm asking is if all right you no know we need that it's that's a no-brainer we know we absolutely know we need it um and we and and i um but is it going to be a reality that will it would be starting in 2021 and if it's not what what happens do okay. you just borrow so, the money and hold on to that so the only thing we, when we start a project, you know, it takes generally a few years. And if you look at the, in the budget book, there's a stack um, debt. We won't bond for that for quite a few years. So what you're talking about is the interest, the temporary interest as you're building the project, because you take out bands on, on those mm -hmm. capital projects. So what you're talking about is what spent and, and what you had to borrow to cash flow wise to, to cover that. Uh -huh. um, with the library, we're actually making out okay because we're getting money ahead of time. Um, okay. and, and so that's quite unusual. Um, but with the fire station, you know, 
I, I can have, um, and I can get that number for you exactly what they have budgeted for temporary interest. And, it, you know, we asked the departments on the capital what they think they'll be spending in the next year, you know, and so that we can figure out some temporary interest. Um, but I think you would be surprised that it isn't as, as much as you think. Okay. Um, but yes, if we found out we weren't going to do that, then that is possibly something you could reduce in the budget um, on the temporary interest line. Director, I'd like to I'd like to ask you a question, please. One second, please. Um, I just want to make sure I answered the question. Yes, thank you, Liz. Um, Sorry, I just want <laughs> I just want to make sure this is Ashley. I just want to make sure that Christine, did you have a question or were you just having a technical issue? I just had a technical issue, um, but it's a, it's better now. Thank you. And um, Councilor Mayo, to be to be acknowledged, please um, type into the chat box and go uh, ahead. I I believe I already did. Right, but I'm I'm asking for folks instead of commenting in the chat box to just say um, I'd like to speak. Just trying to keep well, us in the safe zone for open meeting law. Uh, I can tell you now, I am a one-handed typer. I am <laughs> disabled. I have very much difficulty list or uh, seeing the typewriter. So it's what you what you see is what you're going to get. And right, because Councilor I've Mayo. Asked, I just, because Councilor, I've Mayo I just Councilor Mayo, I just need you to um, try your best to just say I have a question in the chat box, and I'm happy to acknowledge you. Thank you. Thanks. And please, at this point, feel free to go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> Councillor Mayo? Stand by. Would you like to ask your question? Yes, I am. I'm typing it. And I'm typing it now. No, you're, but you're, it, you're all set for the future. Please go right ahead and uh, ask your question. Okay. Uh, my question is: uh, We've uh, Director of Finances has already acknowledged that that there has been layoffs, but that she did not identify where those layoffs were and how many of them were there were. Can, uh, I mean, Director Gilman, was that for Director Gilman, Councilor? Uh, yes. Mayor, yes. Should I, you, would you like me to answer that? Mayor Rita Gardner? Well, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear who you were addressing, uh, Liz. No, I just want to make sure I... Yeah, I just want to... Uh, I'm happy to have you answer it. I okay. was wanted to... Councillor Mayo, to be, clear, uh, to be clear that there have been no layoffs as a result of COVID-19 at this stage of the game. Oh, no, they're talking about the budget. Uh, that's not the way his question read. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about COVID-19. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor Mayo? Yes. Um, so there, there's, anti now it's not already happened, but in the next fiscal year, which is July 1, that there was one position from the treasurer's office and a reduction in hours in the accounting office. And, and as well as one less person in central services purchasing as um, a member retired 
an employee retired. So those were the areas where it was reduced. Okay. Thank you. Great. Um, any other questions for Director uh, Gilman? Seeing none. Uh, thank you very much. Um, is there anything else um, from either the mayor's office or other city employees? Uh, it, this is Roxanne. Um, not really. I thank you all for your patience. I, I did want to address Jenny's concerns as far as building goes. Partly, we, we um, our capital projects, particularly the library and the fire station. I think Liz answered it pretty well. But they're, you know, they we build for the future, and that's how we plan our debt as well. Um, the fire station is well underway and it is dependent upon the, I'm sorry, the library is well on its way. And as you know, it's dependent on their uh, moving the fire station. Now, those plans are also uh, underway and I was going to report on those, but I thought the rest of the um, evening uh, the earlier part would take a little longer, so I opted not to. But the um, building committee for the library, for the um, fire station has been um, put in place, and we are accepting, as of today was the deadline for the uh, designer. And once we have the designer on board, then that person will be able to assist us in um, not only coming up with the design and costs, uh, more accurate costs for the um, for the fire, the fire and police station, but also with um, moving it and finding a temp, uh, getting a temporary location and understanding that. So just wanted to make sure that people understand that um, much of that, much work has already gone into uh, both of those projects and um, they both should go forward um, as planned from the standpoint that they are quite dependent on one another. Thank you, Mayor. Um, who, is, who is City Council? Is that, was that you, Mayor, in the chat box? That was me, Ashley, Kathy. Oh, yep. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge before you moved on to public comment that there are a few members of the public joining us. And I checked while I was listening to the conversation here, we are going live on GPTV. Wonderful. Wow. Perfect. Um, and so I just wanna make sure that uh, the mayor and city employees um, wanna make sure that they have wrapped up their portions yes. before we move on. I think we have. Thank you so much. Um, and I just want to pause and, and thank the mayor, Director Letourneau, both chiefs and, and everybody, right? So everybody that's been a part of this effort. Um, who knew what we could do uh, working together in such a short amount of time? A testament and like the counselors all being able to do a virtual, like this is crazy, but proud uh, to call Greenfield my city because you all have stepped up to the challenge and and this is our new normal so thank you so much mayor um with that being said i'd like to explain to our public um how we're going to do public comment if you'd like to speak so usually in a in-person meeting we have that little handy dandy uh we have a sign-in sheet well we don't have a sign-in sheet but what we do have folks is a chat box and so for those of you who are here on the call who would like to speak, um, to access the chat box, you're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like seven little circles, one with a microphone, one with a video, one with an arrow pointing up, one with a person. That next one is a little talk bubble. You're gonna click on that top bubble and that's gonna open your chat box. And that will be our virtual bulletin. 
board in our sign-in sheet. So if you'd like to speak, I'm going to ask you to please type in your name and your address, and I will call you by the order that you've entered your name and address to speak. Um, you will have three minutes to speak, just like during a meeting. Um, and I will ask that you sign in um, within the next minute, please. And if you're just here to watch and listen, that's fine too. But I do want to make sure that we're giving um, our, our public the opportunity to speak if they would like to. And while we wait to see if anyone's going to be signing in, I can go through and remind folks of our logistics. So um, we've been doing a great job thus far. So we're going to start with uh, orders, motions, and resolutions. Um, I am going to call on the uh, subcommittee chair to read the motion. The motion, I mean, the um, page numbers are not there in the agenda, but I have them here next to me so I can tell everybody what page to turn to for each motion. Um, if you would like to um, comment, ask a question or debate a motion, same process, please use your chat box to type simply, I would like to speak. Um, everyone's been doing a great job this far and I so appreciate uh, your cooperation. I'm not seeing anyone from the public who is signing in. Um, and I forgive me if you're having technical issues and I'm not waiting. Um, but uh, that being said, I am going to move us forward. We do not have a public hearing tonight. We have no second readings. So we're going to move forward to motions, orders, and resolutions. Everybody, um, item one is on page 12 in your packet. And that is taking from the table FY20-53, the amendment uh, of 56-18 annual stipend for city council and the school committee. And I know that this was a joint effort between um, a and O and Ways and Means. Um, so I am going to ask Councillor Gwyn to read this motion on page 12. And then I will ask both Councillor Gwyn and Chair, I mean, Vice President Wheeler to share um, from both sides. All right, um, President Stemple, the, on page 12, it's two parts. You want me to start with the top part? Taking it from the table? Yes, please. I move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council take from the table order number FY20053 to amend the code of the City of Greenfield as written in the strike through attached here to chapter 56. Article 7 stipend for school board members and city councilors, section 18. Annual stipend effective January 1st, 2025. And further, that non-substantive changes to the numbering of the ordinance be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the Code of the City of Greenfield, which was tabled at the January 15th, 2020 City Council. Thank you. Um, and so to, I feel like this council is just so good at taking things from the table because of the January meeting. So just reminding everybody, um, this is to take from the table a yes vote puts it on the table, a no vote keeps it there. So we will do a roll call vote, please, uh, Clerk Scott. President Stemple, we need a second for the motion, please. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Second, <laughs> second. Councillor Gilmore. Thank you. Uh, roll call to take from the table. Councillor Jarvis. Yes. Councillor Gwynn. Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Uh, no. Councillor Gilmore? No. Councillor Wheeler? No. Councillor Mayo? Councillor Mayo, I turned your microphone on. 
Stan, I'm having uh, technical issues. Thank you. Can we come back to him, maybe? I can. I, I would be. I, I would be a no. no. Thank you, Councillor Hirschfeld. No. Councillor Elmer. No. Councillor Forgy. Councillor Forgy, your microphone is now on. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Ricketts? No. Thank you. The roll call is five yes. Sorry, five yes, seven no. The motion does not pass to take from the table. All right, thank you. So on the table, it shall stay. Um, next, we have an order amending ordinance chapter 56, officers and employees, section 17, mayor. I'm going to kick this one to Vice President Wheeler, please. Page, that's on page 14. Thank you, Madam President. I move to be ordered that the Greenfield City Council amend the code of the city of Greenfield as written in the strike through attached here to chapter 56, article six, mayor section 56-17, strike $70,000 and in its place insert $95,000 and further amend the code of amend the index of the code and further that non-substantive changes to the numbering of the ordinance be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the code of the city of Greenfield. Chapter 56, article six, mayor, section 56-17, strike section C in its entirety. Thank you, do I hear a second? Second. Second. And please, I heard someone first. Please say your name. I heard a Councillor Ricketts. Councillor Ricketts, second. Thank you very much. Um, motion's been made second. Uh, report from both, and there is our fur councillor. Um, <laughs> a report, please, from both. <laughs> um, a report, please, from both um, A and O as well as Ways and Means. I'll defer to Councillor Gwynn to go Thank first, please. You. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. Um, when we uh, talked about this at um, a and and there was a lot of discussion, we uh, voted on it a little bit differently. We voted on the language and the strike throughs, and we were going to leave the amount to be determined by ways and means. So um, a and gave a, a positive recommendation that the strike through and the language changes were correct. And we'd await further discussion and talk after Ways and Means with Councillor Wheeler were able to put the appropriate revenue that they felt was correct to be in compliance with um, like communities and um, existing compensation for the mayor. Great, thank you. Vice President Wheeler. Thank you. Um, and Ways and Means took this up. We took the language that was forwarded uh, from a and and the recommendation to look at the number and gave a unanimous positive recommendation of $85,000. So that is to say striking the, the amount uh, 95,000, which was of course in the original order 70,000 and inserting in its place 85,000. Okay, looking at that now, yep. Okay, um, are there any questions from counselors? Discussion? Counselor Gwynn.
I believe you're muted. <laughs> Counselor Gwyn, you are still muted. Oh, that's not helpful. There you are. <laughs> oh. It's oh, muted again. Not <laughs> Counselor Gwen, you muted yourself again. Try one more time. Are we? There you are. Now? Yes. <laughs> All right. Wow. Um, okay. Um, Counselor Wheeler, on this, there was also a second revenue amount in Section B where it said the base shall never exceed $100,000. I just want qu clarification that that language of $100,000 or what you determined to be correct. Thank you uh, for mentioning that, Councillor Gwynn. Um, the subcommittee did uh, talk about that, and we clarified that the that the language which says the base shall never um, exceed $100,000 um, only applies to new mayors. So um, it does not, by the way we read it, apply to um, a mayor who's been in office. So at this point, we did not feel the need to revise that number. Um, certainly at some point in the future, there may be a need, but we, we chose not to at this time. So it'll stay $100,000. It used to be 70. You are saying that it, it was determined that the 100,000 was accurate at this time. The, um, the, the base never shall exceed 100, yes. Correct, all right, thank yes. you. That, the, the, once again, I just want to make sure a &O had no problem with the language. We just want to make sure that $100,000 was determined to you to be accurate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have, I, I don't know if this quantifies as a friendly amendment or not. Um, on line two under A, changing the mayor may request in their budget versus his, her. Um, I just don't know why it needs to be uh, his or her versus there. Um, and um, do you, I guess I don't know who would accept that because there's two uh, chairs managing well, the process. As far as A&O goes, I don't feel that we'd object to that language as long as it was legal um, language from that end. Yeah, and the same goes for, for Ways and Means. I think we would we would happily accept that as a friendly amendment. Great. And then I have a, I have a question. I know, um, and this might be helpful to counselors too, as I attended the A&O meeting when you were spending a lot of time being thoughtful about what language meant what. And so just understanding how this would work with layman's terms versus this very articulate language is before we were working with a reset. So the reset has been striked through. And so the thinking is um, whoever the current mayor is, whatever salary they have, um, when they are no longer running or someone else is newly elected, what happens then? So say their, their salary is 95, um, and then there's a newly elected mayor, what happens to their salary? Just to clarify how this language landed. The, the clarification, I guess, would be um, that they would, it was talking about base salaries. And, and so the mayor shall receive an, uh, an annual salary of $95,000. So, and it wouldn't, it should never exceed a hundred thousand dollars were the thing. So you had the entrance level with a maximum, and that's where we thought the language, uh, as presented, had enough protection. Great, thank you very much. Um, any other questions from counselors or or comments? And again, just a reminder: if you do have a question, what counselor Gwen did was perfect. Just type the word "question" in the chat box, and I'm happy to acknowledge you. The only difference, I'm sorry, Councillor Stumple. Continue. Um, I, of course, was reading off the paper, which was 95,000, although Councillor Wheeler just told us it was 85,000, so I don't want to be on record with the wrong amount. 
And so it sounds like we just need to make sure that that language is amended in this copy here. Um, Correct. Councillor Gilmore, you're next. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, the it, This is kind of a question and kind of a comment. Um, so this is part of the charter, I believe. And when the charter uh, review group comes together, hope which, <laughs> I mean, I kind of was picturing that would happen in the next month or two. And at this point, I'm not sure when it will happen. So when we vote on this tonight, is that something that's automatically going to be forwarded up to that group? And um, as a member of that group, would it be on, you know, the, the city councilors who are part of that to, to bring this forward or is it automatic? I'm just kind of curious about where this lands after tonight's vote as far as the charter is concerned. For that question, I'm going to defer to Clerk Scott. My assumption is let's let's package everything that needs to go to the Charter Review Commission for this year there, but um, I'm not sure if that's allowed. So I believe as part of the Charter and Ordinance Review, both documents would this year need to be brought in line with one another. So when Ordinance and Charter Review is going on, if one affects the other, it would have to be brought in line. Um, uh, Vice President Wheeler has a comment on this. Thanks. Um, I, my understanding is this is in the code, not the charter. That is. And Councillor Gwynn, is that also what you were going to say? That's exactly the clarification I want to make. This was code change, not charter change. In fact, we made sure in the language, both Councillor Wheeler and I, that we weren't changing anything that was charter because that's not usually our process, we change code. Okay, so thank that you for clarifying that. Just that process will still be heard through your committee, Councilor Gwen. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you, Ashley. Um, thank you for clarifying that because I've I've been at I've I've been at odds with this in my brain this whole time. So thank you. No, may I make another good. suggestion, Ashley? Yeah. If there is an amendment to be made to the ordinance, if the proposed, the suggestion that you had of changing his slash to hers to there, if that could be included in any proposed amendment, that would be wonderful. Great. And I will make sure that Vice President Wheeler does that when it's time to make that. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody here. Um, Vice President Wheeler, were you able to, do you still have your question? Um, I was just going to make the motion to amend at this point, and um, if people, maybe the, the conversation could move over to that. Sure. So, I, I motion, no, I'll defer to um, Councillor Jarvis. Yeah, I just I typed it in there and I wanted to get it in before you made your motion. That's all. And it didn't get seen. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, if you could just correct me if I'm wrong. I thought when you guys were doing your um, uh, your meeting before this, the I just wanted some clarification on the hundred thousand. That wasn't the ceiling. That just meant that the person that that was a new mayor couldn't start at that because apparently, if we have a mayor in there for fifteen years, he's going to make he or she is going to make more than a hundred thousand dollars. Correct? It's not a ceiling. It's just a cap on the start and salary. Correct. E yes, correct. Okay, that is correct. Thank you very much. Um, except that, may may I? Do I have the floor? Yeah. Um, yes. Except that there are sort of nuances to this that I'm, I'm not entirely sure we we fully talked out in ways and means because we were focused um, more on the um, number and the amount of compensation. But I'm now a little concerned that um, the, the word base remains while being removed. It remains in section B while being removed in section A. Um, so I may, I, I guess I would, 
ask Councillor Gwynn if um, Councillor Gwynn, if you feel that it's um, it has the clarity that it needs. You know, this was we, um, Councillor Stemple. Can I go forward? Yes, please. Yep. Um, we talked about this, and I would. I might need you know one of my uh, counselors from that committee. We talked, <laughs> excuse me, on the mayor shall receive an annual salary of $95,000. They struck the word base. And on the bottom part, it says the base shall never exceed $100,000. And that was, that was the question that, that we had when we were doing it. Do those need to have some language um, that, of, of similar of talk? In one, so is it, is it an annual salary of $95,000? Five thousand. It's it's not a, a base salary. So in the bottom, um, you know, the annual salary should never exceed a hundred thousand. Is different than what Councillor Jarvis just asked because the annual salary never exceeding a hundred thousand is not what that says. It says the base shall never exceed a hundred thousand. Oh. So there, there's where the difference was. One, if you're going to have the base uh, never exceed a hundred thousand on the starting of the mayor. Um, is it the annual salary? Now, I would say where that came from is each year um, or each time the mayor can request uh, an increase to their salary during budget so they can receive um, an annual salary of 95000 and then they can ask to change it. So that's why it wasn't changed in base in the beginning. It was trying to get rid of that reset portion. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, so I, I see your your question, Councillor Gilmore, but I'm going to pose a question. Um, it sounds like this might not quite be ready. I just want to gut check Councillor Gwynn and Vice President Wheeler if they feel like this is ready to vote on or if it might behoove us to send it back to committee for just one more round before we move it to vote at the full council level. And if you both say yes, we can work this out. I just don't want to be wordsmithing and moving things around here on the floor. Uh, I think the only problem I'm having with this is this has been there for our, our new mayor uh, for quite a bit of time. Um, and I think we might be able to handle it this evening and make sure if there's some of that terminology that either is concerning to um, town clerk or if there's some counselors that that aren't comfortable uh, with the the difference in the language, then we could talk it out. But I understand we some of it is wordsmithing and and understanding of the intention. Councilor Wheeler. Yeah, I concur that um, I think we can get through this tonight, and that there is a um, I think a little not pressure, but I think that there's should be some incentive to get through it tonight because. The mayor is um, being compensated under the, the le much lesser amount. And I do think it would be fair um, to deal with this in time for the FY21 budget um, to be approved in a way that uh, this could go into effect. So um, I, think, I think we can talk it out. I'm... Uh, unsure that section b is necessary from my from my standpoint um, you know I'm not quite ready to make the motion to remove it but i think i'd like to talk about it Councilor let stemple me, let me can i um is it appropriate to let other counselors ask or do you just want to finish one more thing Councilor gwen i just want I, w I just want to draw our attention to another piece of this mm -hmm. language if you notice in a it says the mayor shall receive an annual uh, salary of 95000 But if you look further on, it says the mayor may request in any of their budget submission to the town council an increase in the base salary. So there's where base comes back in section A. Uh. Okay, it comes back. It says they can increase the base salary. However, the increase shall be the lesser of and it shows the guidelines that were set up to um, control that. Then when you refer to it in section B, it says 
the base shall never exceed 100,000. And that's where that, that comes from because they can increase the base and they can ask to increase it, which they have to do on a yearly basis. But that's where base comes back in. It's being struck in the top in the first line, but it still appears in the top under um, submission to the town council, an increase in that base salary. So it gives control to the council still to go over the uh, $95,000 or $85,000 in this case. Okay. Um, I'm going to acknowledge Councillor Gilmore at this time for her question, and then maybe we can continue figuring this out. Thank you. Um, so I am a policy person and I'm a labor person. And I think that I read some of these words in a different light than some other people might read them because um, there's a lot of, you know, technical like shop talk jargon sort of stuff that I, that, some meanings that I put into these. So when I'm thinking of somebody's base salary, I'm thinking this is how much they get paid. And then in addition to their base, they can get things like overtime and holiday pay and hazard pay and, you know, clothing allowance or, you know, there are different things that go, you know, different ways that people are compensated outside of their earnings um, that I see just from my labor perspective. Uh, um, so I'm wondering... I don't, I don't think someone, you know, in a position like, like the mayor, you know, is obviously it's a salaried position where they get paid a set amount. They don't get hazard pay. They don't get overtime or holiday pay or things like that. So why are we using the word base at all? Uh, does my question make sense? I think it does. Um, and so I will... I'll throw it up in the air and I'll let either Vice President Wheeler or um, Councilor Gwynn answer that. I think base is what we had to start with because base was originally in the language. Am I right? Um, yeah, the original language said an annual um, base salary of 95,000 and they struck the word base from that portion because they didn't want it to, um, up here, Councilor Wheeler, where where did you get to with that terminology? Because we debated that. Major, maybe Councilor Rickford, for G, um, when we were discussing this uh, in detail with language, because we spent a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, there's a part of me that agrees exactly with Councilor Gilmore in saying I'm not sure where base came to play, and there was a reason that base had to come in later, but um, I'm not sure it's necessary if it's going to read annual salary. Um, and then the mayor may request to the town council an increase in salary. However, the increase shall be the lesser of with those ramifications. And then um, any increased vote to the town council in any year shall become the new base for future requests. That's the piece where base comes back. Because in that part B, it says in any year shall then become the new base for future requests. The base shall never exceed 100. Um, I'm going to acknowledge uh, Councillor 4G. She's been waiting very patiently. Um, mm -hmm. and she you. might also have some comments based on the process from a &O. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you. Um, what I wanted to suggest because it's it I'm definitely on board with the fact that the mayor needs to get paid um, a higher salary than she's making right now. It seems to me that the language is um, a, something that a labor attorney might want to take a look at to advise us. I realize this is just the code, but the code is is based on the charter. And so it might be in our best interests to push this back out for a legal review because we're going to need that same kind of review when we do, uh, you know, when we're looking at the charter to make charter amendments. Does anybody have any comments on that idea? And if you do, please chat in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Um, I just have a I just have a sense that this isn't quite ready, and I understand. I'm I'm totally for um, paying the mayor what that role is due, but this just sounds like it's really not ready. Um, and I don't want us to sit here for an hour and and ruminate. I want to give everyone a chance to speak. And so, uh, Councillor Gilmore, you had a friendly amendment. Yes, and I recognize that some other people um, commented in the comment box after me. So if this clears things up, then that's great. And if not, I'm willing to um, take it back. But I'm saying as a friendly amendment, let's say the mayor shall receive an annual salary of 85000 The mayor may request in their budget submission an increase in their salary However, the increase shall be the lesser of the average increase, including any COLA or step in pay, such and da, 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 da. 5 percent of the May's salary, da, 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 da. B, any increase voted by the city council in any year shall then become the new basis, not base, of yep. any further request. Does that make sense to people? I'll second that if that's a motion. My only question would be, um, Councilor Gilmore is base comes up again in the next sentence. The, what I'm looking at on page 14 under C, the base salary shall reset da, da, that part. No, above struck. that. No, above that. You, you just said then becomes the new. Oh, shall be the basis says, for any future requests. Um, the annual salary shall never exceed $100,000 to finish my thought. Does that does that make sense to folks? I think that's a different intention than what the base meant in that line. I'm gonna I'm gonna Yeah, that's the stumble point right there. <laughs> yeah, so let's um hear from I wanna make sure that everybody's being heard. So Councillor Disorder. So what I I hear what everyone is saying and appreciate it. I think that it would be um we've been holding on to this for quite a while and I think that two committees have reviewed it and agreed upon it. Could we perhaps consider voting on it as two different subcommittees agreed on it and then at some juncture run it by our um if you have someone else that you want to run it by or or if not do it retroactively because i i think it's unfair the way it is right now and holding on to it just doesn't feel right to me that's all councillor ricketts Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for all your thoughts into this. I think when it was on the A and O table, why we had it so long was because we spent all of our time just working on the word reset. So I think all of this really began with the previous mayor. Um, as he left, he's the one who had put this forward. So this is actually Mayor Martin's work. So I think what he was trying to do was to get whomever was in this position next not be at that 70,000. It works up slowly again. So we ended up spending so much time on all the wording and stuff on it and it should have really just been about more about the dollar amount so i think the base piece of it is basically about and why we didn't want that seventy thousand any longer either was because the, the next mayor and the next mayor after that could come in being a mayor from some other city. So we just wanted to make sure it didn't 
go back to 70,000, but we needed them to know, well, the base that we are gonna pay here is 85,000. So I think we are just actually turning our wheels more than they need to right now. So I think we just need to really just take out some of this wording that's tripping people up. I think we need to just make it so it's clear and just look at it as if we were putting this ad in a paper or something of how someone would be hired and think about it in that way. The Charter Commission will work on it more, but we were basing it on something other than Charter. So I think we're just getting too lost in it at this point. I agree with you, Councillor Ricketts. I looked at a few other communities' language for their mayor, mayoral compensation in uh, West Springfield, for example, just says that the mayor is paid this. And then so he's making this much. And then if someone comes in after him, they're making that much too. And so I think we're looking at it from like a step increment and they don't have that provision. There's no step increment. They just pay their mayor a fair amount. And then if they want to change it, they just change the amount. And so this language to me is prohibitive. Um, and, and like, it's like, I, I agree that Mayor Martin had to go through hoops in order to get paid fairly. And so in his intention to make it more simple for the mayor after him, I believe there's still a lot of hoops language in here um, that we have to jump through in order to get this done. I, at this time, I realize that, okay, I'm going to counselor Gwen, and then if I feel like we can't get there, I'm going to send it back to committee. All right. Um, here's what I'm thinking. First, you have to look at, we didn't change B at all. B wasn't changed. It was only C was taken away and A was modified. If we take and put base back in that first line, the mayor shall receive an annual base salary of 85000 then base makes sense everywhere. We just put base back in. Base in the beginning doesn't change anything. It just says they receive an annual base salary. If they want to increase it, it says in the next line that they submit it to the council and there's a procedure. And then in the end, it says the base shall never exceed 100,000. We can take that up another time. Just put base back in, in that front line of A. If base is there, it doesn't change the meaning of this at all. Point of order, is there a motion and a second on the table? No. No, that was with well, the motion was made and I don't I don't think so. I'm uh Councillor Gilmore. Councillor yeah. Councillor Wheeler seconded, I believe. I think Councillor Gilmore there didn't was, she make an amendment. She she kind I for me both both the motion and the second were made like, well, is that? I don't right. know if that is if it is. And so I'm not sure that Sheila ever made a firm motion. Clerk Scott, where did, what would you gather that as? I believe I heard a motion by Gilmore and I believe I heard Wheeler starting to make a second, but there was conversation happening. So I'm not clear if I heard a second or not. In my opinion, it sounded as though Sheila did not officially make a motion and then Vice President Wheeler asked if it was a motion and said if it was, he'd second it. To me, it seemed a lot more discussion based. Um, point of point of point of information or point of order. Um, yes, I believe P President Semple is correct about that. But is there not already a motion on the floor from you? Yes. Uh, yes, which I originally yes. and and that the council yeah. needs to act upon. The original motion is on the floor. Yeah. It was seconded and parliamentarian has made a comment agreeing with President Stemple that there is no second motion on the floor. Perfect. Thank you, Will. So I would like to make an amendment to Councillor Wheeler's uh, motion if we want to go back or let Councillor Wheeler 
reiterate it, maybe leaving that base in there, and then we could probably move this forward. By all means. So um, do we want Councillor Wheeler just to read the 85,000 as the base salary and move it forward um, as is? There's three. There was so no motion. So there his, was no motion to amend the amount to eighty-five thousand. The the amendment okay. now would, would be the word base adding back in the, the eighty-five thousand and the replacing his her with there. So there'd be three elements of this amendment Correct. if so chosen to to make it. Second. Uh, yeah, I, I second I, that. Could someone please clarify for me who made that motion? Vice President Wheeler, please make the motion. <laughs> Gladly. Uh, I've, I've been wanting to. Motion to amend the article as follows, to restore the word base in uh, the sentence, the mayor shall receive an annual base salary of, uh, to replace, to strike the word 95,000 and replace with the words 85,000. To strike in the same paragraph the word his slash her and replace with there. Uh, and that's that's it, I believe. I second that. Second, second Councillor Ricketts. I heard Councillor Gwynn second. Um, so motion's been made, seconded. Question, Penny, I mean Penny, I'm reading the names on the screen. Councillor Ricketts, would you like to um, speak? Sure, Ash. No, it's fine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> President. All I, all I was gonna say, and I'm glad Councillor Wheeler got to it is, he has been trying to do it because I've been unmuting every time so I could hurry up and second this and things just kept happening to him. And yes, I, I just wanted to clarify it, but what he just did was perfect. And yes, that's it. But he was trying. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gilmore. Yes, I wanted to go back to my question about the base salary, because like I said, when you're talking about labor law, a base salary is a very, very specific legal term that we use in union contracts. So in addition to this base salary, I don't think the mayor is, is, is really eligible for any kind of additional pay. So I wonder why we're including the word base salary. And if we're using it as something different than the, the legal definition, I wonder if that might be a problem. Um, I don't know enough about that. I'm gonna address um, Councillor Dolan. I need to grab water. May I please have Vice President Wheeler step in for me, please? Um, so yes. This is Councilor Dolan. So um, I've been looking up a lot of definitions while we've been having this conversation. My understanding is that base salary just means um, the money that someone is paid and does not include uh, fringe benefits. So if we did not have the word base in there, an argument could be made at some point that the fringe benefits are part of the salary and um, that would be a justification for lowering the actual money that we're paying the mayor. So I would, I would advocate for keeping it in based on all the definitions that I've read. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dolan. Are there... Is there anyone else that would like to speak on the amendment? Um, you, if you have anything to say, you might as well, because I don't know that we're, we want to vote before until President Stemple returns. But I am glad that it seems like we finally talked this out. Um, Councilor DeSantis. 
uh, Councillor Dolan's definition. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Gilmore. I see that um, President Stemple has returned, so I'm going to return the meeting to you, President Stemple, and say that um, Councillor DeSorger, I believe, has a question. By all means. So, so we've all talked a lot. Uh, I, I'd like to move the question. Second. Uh, question has been motion's been made, seconded, non-debatable. Uh, roll call vote, please, Clerk Scott. Yes. So will someone please clarify me for me who seconded the motion? Councilor Gwen. Thank you. Okay, roll call to call the question. Councillor Jarvis. Yes. Councillor Gwynn. Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley. Yes. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler. Yes. Councillor Mayo. Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes. All right, so we are going to move back into another roll call vote to vote. <laughs> So this is a roll call on the motion as on the amendment to the motion. Councillor Jarvis. Yes. Councillor Gwynn. Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley. Yes. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Sorry, yes. Councillor Wheeler? <laughs> Councillor Mayo? Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. The amendment passes unanimously. Wonderful. Uh, and it just tons of great work by everybody on this. So thank you for working together um, and partnering you two committees for getting this done. So thank you very much. Um, moving us along, um, item three is amend rules of procedure. Five. Yes. Actually, that was the motion to amend. It was not the final motion as amended. Oh, sorry. You go to get water for a second and you don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So is there any discussion, further discussion on the amendment? Motion. Second by Gilmore. Sorry. I'm sorry. Did you need a second? No, so we uh, we so we so just to clarify, so I'm on the same page 
which I thought I was on. So we just, we voted to approve the amendment. So the amendment, so now we are discussing the full motion as amended, the main motion. Can someone read it back Correct. so we're all definitely on the same page? Yes, please. Yes, please, thank you. I Would you like me I to mean, read it? I would appreciate yes, it. Ms. Clerk Scott. Okay. Um, Ordinance 57, 56-17 compensation. A, the mayor shall receive an annual base salary of $85,000, period. The mayor may request in their budget submission to the town council an increase in the base salary. However, the increases shall be of the lesser, be, excuse me, shall be the lesser of, one, the average increase, including any COLA or STEP, in part for the same fiscal year negotiated with all bargaining units within the town of Greenfield or, number two, 5% of the mayor's salary for the prior fiscal year. B, any increase voted by the town council in any year shall then become the new base for any future requests. The base shall never exceed $100,000. Thank you. And so now to uh, Mr. Roberts' point, this is now the main motion. This is what we're voting on. Correct. Discussing. So is there any discussion on what we have now from counselors? Seeing none, we will take a roll call vote and we're voting on the motion as read by Clerk Scott. Councilor Jarvis. Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Gwynn. Yes. Councilor Disorder. Yes. Councilor Bottomley. Yes. Councilor Dolan. Yes. Councilor Gilmore. Yes. Councilor Wheeler. Yes. Councilor Mayo. Yes. Councilor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councilor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. Would the president like to vote? Sure, and I also vote yes. Unanimous. All right, well done, everybody. Um, Moving on, uh, item three now is amend rules of procedure 565-5A uh, to debate limits. I am going to ask Councillor Gwynn to please read this on page 15. All right, here we go. Move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council amends the Rules of Procedure, Chapter 565, Rule 5, Debate, Section B, 1, limits to read as follows. B, limits. No member shall speak more than twice to the same question without leave from the chair, nor more than once until all other members desiring to speak have spoken. Item 1, no member shall have or hold the floor for more than three consecutive minutes of debate unless extended by a majority vote of the council. Motion's been made. Second by Gilmore. Thank you. Um, report of committee, please, Councillor Gwynn. This received a unanimous negative recommendation from appointments and ordinances. Thank you. Um, I see a question or a comment from Councillor Desorger. Hi. Um, 
I agree with what um, appointments and ordinances came up with. I do not see this thus far as a committee where people are speaking for a great length of time or interrupting each other. We give normally in public comment, which we're not having now, an hour and a half sometimes or two hours to let people speak. And I think one of the most important jobs that we have as counselors is to listen to one another and to make those decisions. If we do have a problem where someone is taking too much time or speaking too often or interrupting another, this might be something to put in place. But right now I see this as a wonderfully working body. And I think that we really do need people to participate. I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gilmore. Thank you. Um, I would actually like to speak in support of this. Um, I think that three minutes is enough time to state your case. At, you know, when, whenever we have something that comes up, we all have the opportunity to make a comment and to argue in favor or against. And then there's a period where we can ask clarifying questions. I think that three minutes should suffice. And if it doesn't, it's up to the chair to lengthen that amount of time. And I think that if something is very complex, we can lengthen it. What I worry about, you know, the, the time that I've spent on the council, what, you know, and I don't, I don't want to criticize anybody as an individual, because I think when it's an individual, it's not a problem. It's when it's all of us, it becomes a problem is when you have everybody who wants to get up and kind of speak for five minutes about how much they love this department or how much they're in favor of this motion, and we're all saying the same thing, that's great that we're all in agreement, but it does take up a lot of time. And I think that that's time that would be better spent when we get to the end of our meeting and we're making tough decisions when we're very, very tired. I think it'd be nice if we could kind of trim this down just a tiny bit I think that three minutes is fine. And I think that if a person, um, not to be critical, but you know, if, if it takes you five minutes to get to your point, then maybe we need to sort of reflect and think about what we need to cut out of our arguments. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ricketts. Yeah, I'd like to say that I don't, um, I'm not in favor of the three minute time limit. I'm basically not in favor of it is because we are talking about thousands and millions of dollars. Now I just see how long this conversation took and how a couple people might have come back two or three times because we're just clarifying it. It's too important. It's a difference between 70000 to 85000 to $95,000. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to people to get elected to sit on this council. And so I'm not going to then look at the clock and want to get out a little earlier at night and want to cut it down. We never used to use the time limits at all. We just began as council using the time limits last year and it was at five minutes and it, and it worked. And we saw people actually changing their minds after listening to each other because people come from different places. Right now, we have a fairly new council. And of all times, this is the worst time to shorten speech because I feel like there's so much that I can learn from some of our newer counselors and stuff. Um, there are people that email me the next day and say, why did you vote no on something? And I explain it if I didn't take the time like I am right now on this particular being. But I never want to even say or have any counselor talk about, you know, the length of time of our meetings or later on when we get tired and stuff, because it's really what we signed up to do. 
five minutes isn't that much time. And we actually um, don't do this often. And I think self-policing is really good. So if you see all the counselors talking about one thing over and over again, that when it comes to you, you can just skip that part. You do it on your own, but we just can't make those kind of rules for each other right now because these residents showed up to elect each and every one of us. They want to know where you stand. They want to know where we stand so at the next election, they know whether they're actually being heard. So I think leaving it the way it is and it's five minutes, it's fine. And we know when we should start to wrap it up. But no, I mean, I, I'm getting to know a lot of the new people on this council. We have lots of things that are going on. We have very big decisions to make. This budget's coming up. Millions and millions of dollars and three minutes should not hold us up from making these big decisions because it's impacting those residents out there. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councillor Dolan. So I was the one who submitted this. I'll just speak um, in support of it. This, first of all, I'm very glad that our meetings have been short and orderly for the last few months. This suggestion was responding to a very real need last year. Um, I, the intention is not to limit debate where we need it. The intention is to limit the extent to which someone can filibuster and also to encourage counselors to be prepared with their comments. Five minutes of speech is 750 words. That is a lot of words uh, to make a point when really we should all be coming to the meetings pretty much prepared to vote anyway. And in most cases we are. So I would just conclude brevity is the soul of wit. I feel like um, three minutes is plenty for what we do and I would encourage folks to vote for it. Thank you. Next we have uh, Councillor Forgy. Um, thank you. I'm really glad to hear that um, Councillor Dolan gave us a little bit of background as to why things um, changed to the point where speech was more limited. Um, I, you know, I understand the frustration, but more to the point, um, I I have to I have to, to go a little bit further than that because it seems that it's reactionary and it shouldn't be reactionary um, in regard to um, representing people and the right of counselors um, to speak. We have Robert's Rules of Order. We also have confidence in our uh, council president whose uh, mission is to make sure that every counselor is um, allowed the opportunity to represent their constituency on the council. We give her, in this case, um, our vote of confidence in her election to control us and patrol us, which is fine. But I am uh, not a person that's in favor of limiting um, the, the, the council, individual counselors' um, right to speak, especially when there are, you know, we represent large groups of people. And many, many issues and huge budget times. And the other um, piece that plays into this for me is we've discussed the fact that counselors are getting stipends. Um, if we're getting stipends and then we're limiting our speech, it doesn't seem that one is consistent with the other. Actually, we should be able to, um, you know, uh, 
be able, again, to address the issues that are on our mind and speak respectfully of one another and listen to our council president when she feels it's time to let another individual speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Porgy. Um, and then we have Councillor Gwynn. Um, yeah, I just, I don't want to repeat what everyone else is repeating, but I do not think limiting the amount of time is, is necessary. I think, in fact, there's a couple of things that were said. I too believe if you have a strong presidency, vice presidency, you have chairs that can see where something's going and direct it correctly. We don't need to tell someone they've spoken too long. If there's a feel by the person running a meeting, then they can make that adjustment as that's being said. There was another um, statement made that most of us come to our meeting ready to vote. Well, if you're coming to the meeting and you're not listening to other counselors debating and making points and making clarifications, then that's not correct either. Um, I was put in my place uh, 20 years ago on this council by people said, why are you afraid to listen to other people's opinions? Because are you afraid that yours might be wrong? And the answer was never, yes, mine was wrong, but it made me think, it made me listen. I came into that meeting with an opinion that I had drawn, but I love to listen to other counselors and draw from their experiences and their pieces. And there were a many of meeting. I came in with thought and left with confidence. And I think we have to do that. And then when we look at something like we just did with the mayoral salary, I watched a lot of the council meetings last year. And there were not many days that I felt you as a team at the end of the day were unanimous and you could present to our constituents that we came together and we worked out our differences and we came up with a compromise and here it is. And we just proved it can be done. So to limit what people have to say to get that unanimous feeling that we're all working as a team, I don't think it's the time to change it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have um, anything to say? Seeing none. Um, oh, Councillor Gilmore. And to the point of facilitation, I do keep, believe it or not, I do keep track of who speaks what. I want to remind everybody that each person does have two opportunities to speak to a motion. Thank you. Um, so I think it is important that we understand how we intend to vote when we come to meetings because these issues are so complex. We can't come in undecided, spend 15 to 20 minutes listening to our fellow counselors and then vote. I think that, you know, I spend a lot of time, you know, reading through things, thinking about it, double check it and make sure I understand the details. I get, you know, all sorts of feedback from my constituents and when I show up at the meeting, it has to be a pretty good argument to change my mind because by then I've already done so much research and I've already talked to so many people, especially with some of these hot button issues, that it would really take a solid argument to persuade me. And going back to Councillor Dolan's point, a really solid argument is going to be delivered in less than three minutes, much less less than five minutes. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Okay. Um, so it sounds it sounds to me like this is preference over um, preference over all else. Um, and what I what I will say is that my preference has always been to yes have some sense of where i stand on something but i do lean on my colleagues and their their personal experiences and their conversations with constituents and their point of views uh the shoes that they walk in that are different than my own to help me think through my decision and um i don't think we've had any abuses of the five minutes. And, and if I do feel as though people are rambling on, I have no problem asking them to wrap it up. Um, I'm not in favor of this motion because of that. Um, I do I do want this council to 
to lean on each other for experience and for information and for ideas. And so I think we've, we've been there and um, yeah, I am ready to take this to a roll call vote. Clerk Scott. Councillor Jarvis. No. Councillor Gwynn. No. Councillor Disorder. No. Councillor Bottomley. No. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler. Yes. Councillor Mayo. Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld. No. Councillor Elmer. No. Councillor Forgy. No. Councillor Rickett. No. Does the president wish to vote? Uh, what is the count? There is currently four yes, eight no. I don't need to vote. So four yes, eight no, the motion fails. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next item. Item four, disclosure by special municipal employee of, okay, so they're separated. Yep, all right. So these didn't go to committee. So I am going to ask Councillor Gilmore to read this one. And this one is on page 16. The City Council moved that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council hereby approves the disclosure of financial interest under MGLC 268A subsection 20D by Special Municipal Employee Kelly Dixon, who seeks to provide personal services to the Greenfield Health Department as a part-time public health nurse identified in the attachment Exhibit A and further authorize the City Council President to sign on behalf of the City Council. Thank you. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I was muted or not. Um, motion's been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Councilor Gwynn. Um, thank you. Uh, any discussion? This did not go to committee. Um, and so we felt it was pretty self-explanatory. Councilor Gwynn. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry, we Gil. didn't take this up. At, we didn't take this up at appointment uh, appointments and ordinances because we wanted it to move forward. It was pretty straightforward, and uh, President Stemple felt that it would be best to get it in front of us as a full council immediately. Thank you, and sorry, Councillor Gilmore. I saw you guys popped up at the same time. No, it's fine. Um, my question is, I, I, I just don't understand what our role is here. Do we? Um, it seems like she's already working for the city. And it's an emergency. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand our role in this. Our role is to raise, essentially we're raising a flag that this could be seen and maybe, um, what's the right language? Uh, it, it, it's a disclosure. So this way um, she's not breaking any, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. The language is escaping me. Um, but so basically we're saying like, yes, thank you for acknowledge, yes, disclosure for conflict of interest. Thank you. Um, so basically we're saying, yes, thank you for letting us know we're either approving it or denying it. So our role is, is saying, yes, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We authorize this, or this is our opportunity to say, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We do not authorize this. That is our role. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, a roll, uh, roll vote, please. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley? <laughs> Councillor Bottomley. Sorry. Councillor Bottomley, I have turned on your yes. microphone. Yes. 
Thank you. Councillor Dolan? Yes. Councillor Gilmore? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Yes. Councillor Mayo? Yes. Councillor Mayo, I have turned on your microphone. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great, thank you. Um, our next is on page 25. It's another disclosure of financial interest. Um, Councillor Dolan, please. One second. Sorry, I didn't mean to like popcorn it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council hereby approves the disclosure of financial interest under MGLC uh, 268A, Section 20D, by Special Municipal Employee Jennifer Hoffman, MPH, who seeks to provide personal services to the City of Greenfield as a part-time medical facility liaison for the Emergency Operations Center identified in the attached Exhibit A, and further authorize the City Council President to sign on behalf of the City Council. Second. Second. Thank you. Sorry. Second by Councillor Gwynn. Um, discussion similar to the previous one. Seeing none, a roll call vote, please. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. <laughs> Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder? Yes. Councillor Bottomley. Yes. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler. Yes. Councillor Mayo. No. Council no, thank you. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. Majority vote passed. Great, thank you. Um, next we have uh, item six, amend ordinance chapter 213, animals section 213-3, license fees D. Um, that is on page 33, and I will ask Vice President Wheeler to read. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I move that it be ordered that the Greenfield City Council amends the code of the city of Greenfield by amending Chapter 213, Animals, Section 213-13, License Fees, Revision D, by deleting the current section in its entirety and replacing it with the following. Chapter 213, Animals, D, should any owner or keeper fail to license a dog by June 1, the owner or keeper shall pay a late charge of $25 before obtaining said license, excepting one, a dog brought into the town as provided in Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 138. Two, when a state of emergency has been declared by the state of Massachusetts. This late fee shall be applicable after the 45th day after the arrival of such dog. And further amends the index of the code and further that non-substantive changes to the numbering of the ordinance be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the code of the city of Greenfield. Motion's been made. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Chris Borgie. Thank you. Um, so this also didn't go to committee. This was brought up uh, right before chairs. We've provided uh, some relief in terms of payments of taxes to residents 
Um, and due to the language in our dog license language, um, we were unable to do that. Um, so we felt that this language would allow us without actually changing Mass General Law language um, to enable our residents um, some time in leniency while um, registering their dogs. Um, does anyone have any questions? I see Councillor Ricketts. Um, I, maybe I'll let the clerk go first because maybe she's going to answer my question. Scott. Thank you. So there's um, a little bit of a formatting issue. So number one, a dog brought into the town as provided in MGLC 14138. The next line should be this late fee shall be applicable after 45th day after the arrival of such dog. And then number two should come after that. Oh, okay. So the comment of the late fee shall be applicable should come after number one and then number two should follow that. My apologies for that error. So do we need to amend the language as it's presented in the packet? Will, Mr. Roberts? <laughs> I'm assuming yes. Okay, I I'm sorry, say that again. Um, so we have a bit of a typo, Mr. Roberts, right. where um line so it goes line in this motion it goes line one a dog brought into the town right. and then it, it's supposed to say this then it should say this late fee shall but we have line item two in between do we have to amend the where it's typed in order to pass it appropriately i think it would be a good idea yeah sure all right so um i'll make that motion i move to amend um, yes, you can ask for a motion. Okay. <laughs> May I ask for a motion? I'll make yes, a motion. I'll make that motion. I was May move. I ask who Councillor Elmer made that yes. motion? I, I, I move that we move the, the line to below the line that appears after it. So, so it reads. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate. Second. From Councillor Ricketts. I think the dog already seconded it. <laughs> that poor councillor. He's just really, really wants to get in. Um, objection. That, that right. wasn't my question. I object. The dog is not an elected member of the city council. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I still have my question. Um, and I just, uh, Mr. Roberts, was that sufficient? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't mean the dog, you mean the, the uh, change. Yes. Yes, Councillor, you may take the floor. Okay, for me or? Yes, yep. Okay, so, um, oh, what my question actually was gonna be was, well, because of this pandemic and everything, um, is there any leeway on these licenses right now? That is a question for Clerk Scott. Yes. So without this amendment, the ordinance does require um, a late fee to be charged. It, sh it says the owner or keeper, if they shall fail to license their dog, the owner or keeper shall pay a late fee. So without the amendment, they shall pay a late fee. But if the amendment were passed, because we are currently in a state of emergency, the late fee would not apply. Perfect. 
until the Perfect. state of emergency was clear. Perfect. Any other questions? There is an amendment on the floor that has not yet been voted on, just yep. to acknowledge. Yep. All right, so let's take care of that first. Let's vote on that amendment to move the sentences around mm -hmm. and we'll take a roll. Councillor Jarvis. Yes. Councillor Gwynn. Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley. Yes. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler. Yes. Councillor yeah. Mayo. Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Gordon. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. The amendment passes. Excellent. Um, any further discussion on the motion? We will take another roll call vote, please. Councillor Jarvis. Yes. <laughs> Councillor Gwynn. Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley? Yes. Councillor Dolan? Yes. Councillor Wheeler? Yes. Councillor Mayo? Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld? Yes. Councillor Elmer? Yes. Councillor Forgy? Yes. Councillor Ricketts? Abstain. Motion passes. Kathy, you missed Great. me. Kathy. I'm sorry, Councillor Gilmore. It's okay. I'm sorry, Sheila. Okay. Councillor Gilmore. No worries. For the record, yes. Thank you. Motion still passes. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, and thank you. our last motion of the night um, is the approval of a multi-hazardous mitigation plan and resolution. And I will have Councillor Gwynn read that on page 34, please. Oh, sorry about that. Page 34? Correct, yep. Upon recommendation of the mayor, ordered that FEMA approve multi-hazard mitigation plan along with the supporting resolution be adopted by the city council as presented in the supporting documentation attached to this order. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Second disorder. Thank you so much. You guys are getting so good at this. Um, motion's been made and seconded. This also did not go to committee. Um, this was a little bit of an uh, add on later. We wanted to avoid putting this on in May because we'll have a lot of budget stuff going. Um, but this is to support a um, grant application from director Torog um, for this plan. Uh, we do have some questions, uh, counselor disorder. Um, um, am I on? Yes, um, I don't have a question. I was on the, just wanted to say I was on the hazard mitigation team um, with um, Chief Strahan, members of the FERCOG, um, we met for months on the this hazard mitigation plan, 
and there was going to be a final presentation where everyone would have gotten to see this. And due to uh, COVID-19, that didn't happen. But I would just like to assure you that an enormous amount of thought went into it. And I am hoping that it will pass. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, Counts, uh, Vice President Wheeler. Um, in all the multiple hazards, this doesn't mention coronavirus at all. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to vote for it again. I'm, I'm going to vote for it anyway. Um, normally, I a month to read a 300-page document would, would not be enough, but these are strange times. So I, I support it. There's a lot of good stuff in here. I haven't been, I haven't gotten all the way through it, but I'm, I'm gonna, Lord knows I have the time. Um, and there, there, I think there is a clause in there that's like, and, and all other hazards, because <laughs> that was the first thing I looked forward to. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bottomley. Uh, yes, I, uh, I don't believe Director Warner is still on, but I did have a question and maybe, uh, Ginny, you can answer this. Uh, but I did want to thank the people uh, who wrote this because it's incredibly in depth report, uh, and it has a tremendous amount of data. Uh, some of it's a little disturbing, uh, but I did have a question because it may come up, uh, with the fire station under the uh, flooding section and the action plan at the end. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure, and I also wanted to state a lot of this falls on the DPW for planning and implementing infrastructure changes for natural disasters. Uh, but one in particular was the Maple Brook culvert, mm -hmm. which, which affects flooding uh, at where they want to put the fire station at 34 Riddell. And I also saw in there that the Maple Brook culvert was recommended in the 2005 mitigation plan for replacement and rehabilitation. Uh, so that I'm guessing that that's a huge or expensive project since nothing was done in 15 years on it. It was listed, I think, as critical infrastructure back then. So I'm, I'm just curious about the status of that. Um, May I speak? May I speak, um, uh, President Stempo? Uh, yes, yeah. I was just going to say that Maple Brook Colvert, welcome to the council, uh, Councillor Bottomley, because you'll hear a lot about Maple Brook Colvert. Um, and I guess the council's chipping away at it incrementally. Um, Councillor Desorger, please, um, please uh, share some more information. Um, I cannot speak to this as eloquently as the people that were involved in this, and I wish some of them were still online. However, um, the Maple Brook culvert is is large, and there's a lot of work that needed to be done to it. As and I do not know that the final location for the fire station is going to be located on Riddell. I, I did hear that that was the last thought. However, the um, fixing of them, if indeed that's where it's going to be, the fixing of the Maple Brook culvert in that area was not going to be an enormous expense. It was a small part that needed to be redone. But I am not a, an um, architect or building designer, and I sat there at the meetings, and I will tell you that there were great heads there together who were looking at that and that, that's all but i know that that one piece of it was not going to be that one piece of it was definitely going to be addressed if that's where it was it was going to go so thank you thank you i'm actually texting the director to see if he'd hop back on but i don't think he'll be able to hop back on before the vote happens um and if i i'll speak maybe through the mayor's office or however you see fit. If those are questions that you have, our directors, our department heads are certainly the most knowledgeable on each of those. So definitely feel free to get that information if you need it, whether it's emailing the mayor's office or uh, Director Warner's office. Uh, Councillor Gilmore. 
And it's very quickly, um, I recognize that, you know, time is of the essence. And I, I do plan on voting in favor um, because of the, the, you know, the nature of, of this. But I just want to go on the record and say I'm really not comfortable on voting on something that I haven't had a chance to really read and digest. And I, I know this is an emergency. I know that. But in the future, if it's not an emergency, I really would like some more time with the material. That's all. I wouldn't say it's an emergency, so to speak. Um, this hazard mitigation plan is important. Um, however, it's not racing to the line as related to COVID-19. So I just wanna make that clear. Um, we just want to move this through because the application deadline um, is coming. Um, Councillor DeZorger. So it, this actually wasn't relative to to um, what was happening right now. It was a um, it's was like a year long plan where we were looking at all the possible hazards. The largest one of which is flooding, and we had wonderful people from the um, uh, uh, what. Uh, River, uh, I think Otis would remember better the um, uh, waterways. River, uh, they were watching over the rivers, and and the flood zone needed to be expanded. We had things that we just weren't thinking about as far as flooding. So it was a mitigation plan for hazards that might happen as far as snow and flooding. And the biggest problem that we thought we would ever have here would be flooding. And so it was addressing a lot of problems. And there was planned to be a whole one day program where all counselors and all citizens could have come to really get informed about this, but it had to be um, uh, canceled due to COVID-19. And now we, we don't wanna lose the funding that we would have gotten. So I would encourage people to vote in favor of it. There were people so much more um, uh, intelligent and eloquent than myself that worked on this. And I, I can assure you it was well done. That's all. Thank you so much for your insight, Ginny. Um, any other comments? Seeing none, we will take a roll call vote. Councillor Jarvis? Yes. Councillor Gwynn? Yes. Councillor Disorder. Yes. Councillor Bottomley. Yes. Councillor Dolan. Yes. Councillor Gilmore. Yes. Councillor Wheeler. Yes. Councillor Mayo. Yes. Councillor Hirschfeld. Yes. Councillor Elmer. Yes. Councillor Forgy. Yes. Councillor Ricketts. Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to presentation of petitions and similar papers. I believe we have none. Um, report of committees. Are there any uh, committee chairs who would like to share what's going on with their committee at this time? Of course, um, what's going on with committees and council is the same. We're, we're managing through in our new virtual environment. And I do want to commend you all for, we've got this down. We're doing a great job. Um, and I'm going to welcome Vice President Wheeler to speak on our very busy budget season. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'll just jump on to say what I've been saying. Um, which is that uh, Ways and Means is into budget season at this point. We uh, spoke about the executive uh, and economic development budgets um, last week. We'll be uh, speaking about public safety tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Uh, the week after that, Greenfield Public Schools, and the week after that, 
DPW and into deliberation. I hope that all counselors are tuning into the meetings, either live or um, the recordings. And we've got a lot to get through, but we got a good committee this year and we're going to get through it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and Councillor Gilmore, announcement about CRE. Yes, I just wanted to let people know that, you know, the last time we met, we were meeting on the fourth Wednesday of the month, and we've changed that. Um, we're going to be meeting on the third Monday of the month, starting at 6 p.m. And since it's not like, so def next week, we're going to be meeting electronically. Um, not on with May. Um, but when we are meeting in person, we plan on meeting in, um, in City Hall. So if anybody has any questions about that, feel free to send me an email. Don't send it to the entire committee because that would be a uh, public meeting. Or sorry, an open, open meeting law. Um, because of open meeting law, please do not copy the entire subcommittee, but you can send an email to me and you can copy Kathy and Tammy on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, I don't believe we have any unfinished business. We don't have any old business. Um, we do have a lot of new business. And so I want to welcome back Vice President Wheeler to read our first readings. Thank you, President Stemple. Okay, everybody, buckle in. This is, this is my favorite part of the year every year. Yours too, I'm sure. City Council first reading, April 15, 2020, authorized payment of $67.33 for FY15 Eversource invoice, outstanding balance. FY 2021 Mayor Capital Budget, appropriate $230,000 to pay fire department lease for engine number two. Appropriate $75,000 to purchase fire department brush truck. Appropriate $350,000 to purchase fire department engine. Appropriate $10 million for the construction of a new fire station. Appropriate $76,000 to purchase security upgrades for 14 Court Square, 20 Sanderson Street, Energy Park, and waste and water pumping stations. Appropriate $150,000 to purchase a mo police mobile command post. Appropriate $20,000 to purchase a police mobile message board. Appropriate $115,000 for the design and reconstruction of Sanderson Street. Appropriate $48,000 for traffic safety improvements. Appropriate $40,000 for the sidewalk replacement program. Appropriate $15,000 to replace guardrail. Appropriate $211,000 to purchase road treatment truck. Appropriate $75,000 to purchase mini excavator. Appropriate $44,000 to replace Fisk Avenue parking lot retaining wall. Appropriate $82,000 to replace Four Corners playground equipment with ACES components. Appropriate $203,000 to pave Newton and Federal Street schools and construct walkway at North Parish School. Appropriate $20,500 for painting at the North Parish School. Appropriate $157,500 to replace flooring at the middle school and Federal Street School. Appropriate $45,000 to replace and repair school fencing. Appropriate $100,000 to replace windows at North Parish School. Appropriate $38,500 to replace Newton and North Parish School's exterior doors. Appropriate $185,000 for equipment and related cost of GSET expansion and customer installation. Appropriate $1 million for repairs and replacement of super inflow and infiltration. Appropriate $940,000 for dredging Leiden Glen. Appropriate $50,000 to be transferred from 1627 bond premiums to replace Green River pump station roof. Appropriate $45,000 for the Millbrook well reconditioning. Appropriate $710,000 to authorize lease purchase for a combination fire engine rescue truck. FY 2021 operating budget, establish spending limits on revolving funds not to exceed 489,000. Appropriate 1,430,399 dollars for the FY 2021 water enterprise fund. 
appropriate $2,280,000 $353 for the FY 2021 Sewer Enterprise Fund. Appropriate $1,529,684 for the FY 2021 GSET Enterprise Fund. Appropriate $53,879,617 for the FY 2021 General Fund Budget. Appropriate $450,000 from water retained earnings to FY 20 Water Enterprise Operating Budget. Appropriate $222,000 from sewer retained earnings to FY20 Sewer Enterprise Operating Budget. That's me. <laughs> Second. Sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, that, I don't believe it needs to be seconded. It was just a first reading. Um, but right. Thank you. Um, and thank you for all of that reading. Um, do we have any motions for reconsideration? Seeing none, I do, before we do break, I just, I have been getting a ton of these scam text messages and emails lately. And so I just want to quickly say and remind residents and counselors and anyone who might be listening um, to be diligent about protecting yourself from scams at this time. Um, and just some guidance. If, if you don't know the cell phone number or the number, or the email or the person on Facebook, don't trust the text, don't trust the email, don't trust the links especially. And even if you do know the number or the email, still don't trust it. And definitely try to avoid clicking on random links. Um, I've, been ex I've been receiving uh, text messages about like, uh, making the most out of the state funding or claiming your share of state assistance. And obviously those are very enticing things. Uh, so yes, the guidance here is when in doubt, don't act. We're in a very, um, we're in a society where it's like, we must act now. I must click on this link now. Just wait and confirm. You can call the, the friend or the family member who sent that to you and say, hey, did you mean to send this to me? Um, so just everybody who's listening, Please don't click on strange links and don't share your personal information. Don't let these jerks take advantage of you during this vulnerable time. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And um, without further ado, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Who moved? Second, Second by Gilmore. Uh, so motion made uh, by Councilor Ricketts. Second by Gilmore. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> None. Abstentions? None. All right. Uh, meeting is adjourned at 10.17 p.m. Um, thank you, everybody, so much. Yeah.